Hi, my name is Terry Green Sterling, and I, along with Jude Jaffe Block, am the co author of Driving While Brown Sheriff Joe Arpaio versus the Latino Resistance. I am the proud mother of two U of A graduates and the proud grandmother of two U of A graduates, the wife of a U of A graduate, and the mother in law of a U of A graduate. <laughs> <laughs> well, bear down. Here we go. Uh, it, Terry, I, I know that uh, your, your love of the border goes very deep. Talk to us a little bit about your family's history along the border. Okay, well, um, I come from a borderlands family. Uh, my grandmother um, was Mexican-American, and she spent the final years of her life in Cananea, Sonora. And so I, as a very little child, would get to go visit my cousins and uncles and aunts and grandmother in, in Sonora. So uh, I was fortunate enough to experience the border when it was the border. It was, it was accepting and loving and people didn't judge each other and it was multicultural and multilingual. And that was the border that I grew to love. And so when, when it started getting militarized and destroyed, I, I wanted to write about it. I wanted to understand why those things were happening. When you wrote your book, which is called Driving While Brown, uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio versus the Latino Resistance, what Latino resistance are you talking about? Uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio uh, pivoted to immigration enforcement in the 2000s when uh, there was a funnel effect of uh, immigration through Arizona because other border stops were, other border stations were pretty closed. And so immigrants had no choice but to go through the Arizona desert. And it was thought that the immigrants would actually choose not to go through the desert because it was so hostile, but they, they did and they succeeded and some ended up in Phoenix. There was a lot of concern among uh, some Anglo Midwestern sort of types uh, about uh, immigrants. They feared immigrants. They, they believed falsely that they committed high rates of crime. They believed that they uh, were falsely, that they were welfare leeches. They believed falsely that they spread disease. All stereotypes that go back a hundred years to the eugenics movement. Um, so Sheriff Arpaio noted that his base was exercised about immigrants and he began to conduct uh, these sweeps of uh, neighborhoods in search of immigrants and sweeps of workplaces. And those were alleged to um, involve unconstitutional policing by um, the men and women who uh, joined this, this resistance to this policing that they felt targeted not only immigrants, but all Mexican people or people of Mexican descent. They felt very targeted by it. So they started this resistance and uh, the book takes you behind the scenes and they show you what it takes to build a resistance and what the struggles are and what the victories are and what the costs are. Uh, it, it, it included a resistance in the courts, yes. on the streets, in the public square and in the voting booth. And it was very well coordinated and in my opinion, a model for fighting unconstitutional policing in the United States. But at the same time, it wasn't just Brown that was fighting back. There were many, many allies within right. the, the Anglo community, within uh, the different generations, the young people, the older people. What was it that brought people together uh, to help, to support, to fight back? It was fundamentally a Latino resistance. There were allies. And what led the Latino resistance to uh, stand up and fight was that, they f that people of color felt targeted by this type of policing. It was absolutely uh, terrifying to people to have these swarms of police cars uh, 
descent on a neighborhood. It traumatized actually a whole generation of, of kids. So what brought them together was the rage. And it was extremely, it was, you know, the outrage, you know, they, we're Americans too. How can they treat us this way? Um, did you ever talk to Joe Arpaio? Yeah. Many, many times. Uh, he was, he was uh, eager to be interviewed. What led up to um, taking that giant leap and writing a book as opposed to covering it as a journalist? Well, by the time um, we decided to do a book, the resistance, much of the action, our pile was, I believe we signed our book contract in 2016 and our pile was out of office in 2016. And then he went on to have a whole relationship with Trump, which is also in the book. But at that point, you know, we would sit in court or we would go out on the streets and um, see this amazing, well-coordinated resistance. And we thought, gosh, if no one writes about this, if no one gets us down, this will be forgotten.